We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Mayville, North Dakota, and we get to visit with the head football coach for the Mayville State Comets, Coach Rocky Larson. Coach, I say that. I could address you as Coach Larson. I could also address you now as Athletic Director Larson. Just within the past couple, three weeks, you've taken a new role there at Mayville State. So congratulations on the new gig as well. Yeah, thanks. Really excited. Uh, obviously, going into year five is uh, a really exciting time on the football side. And um, fortunate enough to be able to step into the athletic director role as well uh, with the help of Billy Tomlin, um, our assistant athletic director, that he can really step in and help um, do different things for us uh, while football is going on. And um, our staff does an incredible job of when I have to get pulled away for AD stuff, they'll be able to step in to help out. So, yeah, I really appreciate that and uh, looking forward to this new challenge. You got there just in time to be a part of the big announcement that's come forward recently in, in, in your part of the country, specifically with the NAI, Mayville State making the move among other schools to the Frontier Conference for 25-26. Yeah, no, and I, I was uh, interim last year, so I've been a part of a lot of these conversations. Wasn't sure if I was going to do this on more of a full-time basis. And I would say the most important thing we've talked about here um, over the last uh, nine months is our conference, you know, with the North Star disbanding, and um, it's been a really good league for us. And what does that do for us? Does that make make us look at NCAA Division Three, NCAA Division II? Uh, the Frontier Conference was always an option, and I'm going to put my AD hat on here. And, you know, one of the big things about the Frontiers, they didn't offer baseball, softball. Um, baseball and softball are two really big programs for us here at Mayville State and a, a tradition that's really important for us. Um, so we had to find a home that would uh, allow us to have baseball, softball, and the Frontier uh, worked it out in the last minute. And uh, we're really looking forward to that challenge. And uh, that league's going to be really good. And now with Simpson coming in, you know, we get 14 teams, um, two AQs in East and the West. Uh, I would say this preview next year is going to be a little bit different because that's uh, that that league is going to be at the top of the NAI, and we're really looking forward to opportunity to be able to get in there and compete with some of those teams. Absolutely, it it should be fun from a fan's perspective for sure. I, I think we're going to have a lot of fun watching that. But I really appreciate what you said about the other sports too, because I that's a big deal. You know, I mean, it's it's not just football, and we're talking football today, but it's not just football, and yeah. you have to think about those things. Absolutely, and there's a lot of. I think the other thing that was discussed a lot is, you know, are we going to be okay sending our basketball teams in the middle of January to to Butte to Dillon, uh, some of those Western um, places where you start getting some mountains, you start getting some snow, and what does that look like on a 13-hour bus ride? So there was a lot of logistical details that had to come through, uh, but it, it will make a really good conference across the board, and we're we're really looking forward to it. And I want to also say. Well, while we're looking forward to getting to the Frontier Conference, we also understand this is last year the North Star play, and whoever wins the North Star Conference Championship in every sport this year, you get to hold the the trophy as the last one to ever win it. You know, so we we want to make sure we keep our eyes on on this year, and um, and that's across all sports. That's not just football, but we want to make sure we go out with a bang uh, in the North Star. Well, I want to talk about that that double round robin schedule one more time for you all this year. We'll get to that in just a moment. Then last season, three and and eight overall, but three and three in the the final six games of the season. Coach, take us through that just a little bit because it seems like things kind of connected past the midpoint. Yeah, and uh, our quarterback was banged up early in the year. Tim Salmon, uh, we were we were limiting in him and throwing here at his shoulder. He did a great job of fighting through it and being able to continue to play. Um, but we had to really change our offensive identity. And towards the end of the year, we started running the ball at a, a much higher clip. And the the big win was, you know, going down to Waldorf and beating Waldorf for the first time in, um, I believe, school history. And going down and we, we had lost by 21 or 28 uh, um couple weeks earlier and we go down there and we, we hold them to 49 less points than we did before. And our defense played at a high level. Um, you know, so we really started to find our identity towards the end of the year. And it was fun to, we also had a chance, you know, we play Valley city to do a double overtime game. Um, you know, we have fourth and 10 quarterback escapes, gets a first down and we have fourth and goal from the three yard line. We go for the win and end up a little short. So, um, you know, we had opportunities down the stretch to maybe get to four or five, six wins and, we just couldn't quite do it, and hopefully we can learn on that and continue to build on that. And uh, But, no, the, the end of the year, I, it's carried some momentum in the offseason here for us, and it's helped us in recruiting and um, all that. So we're really looking forward uh, to this year. 
We're speaking now with Coach Rocky Larson from Mayville State. By the way, one of the members of the AFCA 35 Under 35 Leadership Initiative. Coach, congratulations on that honor as well. You know, you talk about uh, Tim Salmon and, and of course, his his sophomore season. I mean, he was a real gunslinger. And so, obviously, not having that as as a major part of the offense, you would have to make some adjustments in there. He's back. Mason Ullman, uh, one of your top running backs, actually top two, and Daniel Neville coming back as well, and, and Javion Davison, someone for Salmon to throw to. Talk a little bit about that offense as how it could look for 24. Yes, yeah, so we returned 10 of 11 starters on the offensive side of the football. Um, you know, we lose our left tackle and Zach Caesar, who uh, started 54 straight games for us. So replacing that left tackle is not – that keeps you up at night. Uh, but also uh, it's encouraging that everyone else is back. You know, I think the, the two names that we're really excited about would be Derek Frederick, um, the tight end at – you know, he's 6'4", 260-pound, fifth-year senior, um, big bruising tight end. And then his counterpart, Kelby Azure, uh, North Dakota State transfer last year at 6'3", 235. We have two bruising tight ends that can come at you. They both are good in the pass game, catching the football, uh, and they both will come at you and hit you in the run game. So we're really excited to be able to have some two tight end packages along with, uh, you mentioned, uh, Javion Davison, uh, he's been um, an all-conference kid here. He's one of the better receivers I've coached. Malik Flowers, uh, he missed all of last year. Um, he's a really speedy receiver. He He's one of our top receivers we get back. Elijah Roundtree was a kid. Uh, in his first career start, he had 212 yards. Um, he had held the school record for six weeks, and someone else broke it. Um, you know, So we have some weapons on the offensive uh, ball. Now it's on us as a coaching staff. It's on me uh, to make sure we're putting our playmakers in position that we can get them the football and make sure we're getting it to where we need to be. And uh, you, hit, you hit it already. The, the key to the whole thing, you can have weapons all you want, but if you don't have a guy who can get them the football, uh, the weapons don't really matter, you know. So we got to be able to keep Tim Salmon healthy. He took way too many hits last year. Uh, we've talked about that as a staff. We got to keep him upright and we got to make sure our offensive line understands all the protections and um, let him get the ball to where he needs to be because when he's throwing it and he can get it on point, um, he's as good as anyone I've been around. You know, returning players it could be a key on the defensive side of the ball, too. And how big is that, by the way, 10 of 11 coming back on offense with proven commodities there on the defensive side of the ball? Great linebacker and Anthony Johnson coming back as, as uh, well as Will Flemons in the secondary for you. Yeah, we return 11 of 11 on D. So, uh, you know, we're 21 of 22 starters are back, you know. So this is – when I took over uh, five years ago, four and a half years ago during that COVID year, we had 28 kids on our roster. We had to – we knew we had to completely strip this down and completely restart. And um, this is our first senior class, and we have 44 seniors in this class. Um, so this has kind of been the group we've been waiting for, we've been developing. Um, you know, you got Denzel Navy, um, who's been an all-conference kid for us back there. Bailey Mullenberg, um, defensive end, has turned himself into an incredible football player. Devin Woods has been a high-level um, linebacker kid for us. You know, so it's exciting that – when you get to fall camp, those first two, three years, we were still teaching. We haven't had a win. We've had one winning season in 27 years. We know that. And we talk about it. Like we have to, our goal is just to continue to get better every day. But um, if we could find a way, you know, get to four wins, five wins, that's a, that's a really good year here at Mayville state. And um, this group's got, I hope obviously bigger plans, but um, at the same time, we understand where we were five years ago and uh, some of the games and the losses. And we've really done a good job. Our staff's done a great job of closing that gap. Um, but I think it's a big testament to our culture and who we are that we have 44 seniors in today's day and age of transfer portal. And uh, I'm going to go play somewhere else. And uh, the one thing I talk about, there's two things that I'm really proud of that I think are important to talk about. When we took over, our team GPA was a 2.11. Our team GPA this year was a 3.09. Um, you know, so we've made a major step in the classroom. And uh, in our four years here, we've only had two kids leave our program to go play somewhere else. Um, I think that's a testament to our staff. I think it's a testament to our leadership. I think it's a testament to our president, um, our boosters, that we have made Mayville State a place where you can come get a great degree, play college football, and be part of a complete turnaround. And um, it hasn't moved quite as fast as we want it to, but I think we have people in place to be able to get it going this year. Wow, Coach, that that really is. And, and you use that word testament a number of times. I think it, that's the the exact word for it. And and what a statement. What what uh, consistency. And and I appreciate the progress. And, and 
uh, it seems like the culture's in place to be able to continue. You know, uh, one other thing, too, football-wise, uh, special teams. You look like you're going to be in, in great shape there, too. Yeah, K.J. Johnson has been a, a good punter for us, Caden. Um, Bailey Mullenberg has kicked for us. Um, you know, we had Braden Lacombe was our kicker for us last year, and uh, we'll see if he's uh, going to make it back. He's a great job for us. Where we've been really good in special team is J.J. Davison being able to return kicks for us. You know, he's brought one back uh, every year, the starting field position. Um we're still in the recruiting market for a kickoff guy because as we really e evaluated where we were uh, starting field position on our defense, we were giving up way too many yards in the kickoff game. So we got to make some adjustments there. Um, we got a couple weeks left here this summer to be able to chase down a kicker, but we're really excited because those returners can make a world of difference. And we got some kids who can run who've done it for years um, and can be put us in, in great field position and change the game in the return game. So we're, all the same guys we've mentioned on offense and defense, those guys play special teams for us. So, and when you have 44 seniors, you got some role players who might only play 10 snaps on defense, but they're playing 30 snaps on special teams. They're playing all. We have a bunch of special teams warriors that are fourth, fifth year guys who needed a role, you know, and who have stuck it out and want to play college football and want to be part of a roster and work really hard. So, well, I'm excited to see those guys get a chance to continue to compete on special teams. And it's not always offense, defense, and we, we're going to be better in special teams than we've been in the past. And um, that's one of my big things this summer is we have to improve on special teams. You, you mentioned earlier we, we're going to have a different conversation in the preview next year just because of the, the transfer and the change in, in conference membership. Sounds like we're going to have a different conversation next year with all those seniors <laughs> now that you have them. We'll have to be yeah. talking about some new folks. Yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be doing a guessing game off spring practice on who's <laughs> going to be where and what we're going to end up doing. So, uh, no, we're going to enjoy this senior class for sure. And this group I owe a lot to because this is the first group that we recruited. And this, this is the group that committed to us while they were in high school with COVID. So they committed to us without visits. They committed to us – with us coming off a one in 10 season, they committed, like they took a big leap of faith and saying, Hey, I want to go to Mayville, North Dakota to get my college degree. And I'm going to take a chance. And at the time I was 27 years old. I'm going to take a chance on a 27 year old head coach that he might know what he's doing. And they've stuck it out with us and they've given us a chance here um, to put a competitive team on the field. And um, you know, I think that's, that's a big thing is there was in the last couple of years, there was years we weren't competitive. Um, and now we're, we're, we're in games. There's games we should win. Like you said, we go three and three down the stretch last year, and hopefully we can take that momentum and continue to improve and uh, continue to put our kids in position to win some football games this year uh, and send these 44 seniors out the right way. Okay, Coach, really, really quickly, preview just with this the schedule starting less than three months away, Thursday night game, which, by the way, your first three games all at home, August 29th, yes. uh, what will be a conference game next year, MSU Northern, and uh, they got the better of you last year, so you can get them at home this season. Then you get to the first conference game, first opportunity to take on Dickinson State. I know always a challenge there. And then out of conference one more time uh, to invite in Nebraska Wesleyan, D3 school. The Prairie Wolves will come yeah. in Louisville. And, uh, you know, I would say we'll start with the first week there. And uh, Coach Showers and Rome, unbelievable coach, unbelievable human. Um, they played well last year. We, we couldn't put the ball in the end zone. They did some stuff defensively to us, uh, played a lot of cover zero. Um, quarterback got banged up a little bit early there and we we weren't ready to play and that's on me uh northern i mean they did a great job coming out and winning that football game um we're gonna make some changes this year in fall camp uh, we're gonna make some changes to our run game and do some different stuff uh so we can get off to a better start we our week ones around here haven't been very good uh so i've been actually in some staff meetings this week trying to figure out what are we going to do differently this year uh in preseason to make us get off the bus and get us going the right way and uh we don't sleepwalk through that and um that's gonna be a really good football game you know they beat us last, i think they beat us last three times we played them so uh we're going to continue uh hopefully getting them at home will give us a good atmosphere on a thursday night um i know people are really excited about a thursday night game on labor day weekend there so um i think we'll get a really good crowd really good turnout and uh it's it's a great it's a great pre preview for a, a future conference game and um that's gonna be really fun and you know you go to week two dickinson stayed at home I think the world of Pete Stanton and uh, Coach Thier and that staff at Dickinson State, they're the the premier, what everyone chases in this league. And, um, you know, you can chase them all you want, and they don't seem to be letting their foot off the gas anytime soon. And what they've been doing and what the the, the model of consistency and the model of how they play, um, we try to 
play like Dickinson. We try to do it. And what, what coach Stanton's done there and um, it's incredible. And my hat's off to them, but you know, we get a chance to play them at home with 44 seniors last time playing Dickinson at home. Um, you know, you get 60 minutes, anything can happen in 60 minutes. And um, I, we'll, we'll put our kids in a position. And, um, but again, that's, that's a staple. And then week three, you know, that, that, that game's been incredible. The last two games uh, with Nebraska Wesleyan, we beat them in overtime up here. Uh, I think there was over a hundred points scored. And then last year uh, we had the ball fourth and three going in the red zone with 40 seconds left. And we ended up throwing a pick on fourth and three. So it's been a one possession game down to the last two minutes, uh, two games in that series. And uh, coach, coach and I talked and, we wanted to to get that game back on the schedule. Felt like it was a great game for both of us. Uh, so we signed another two-year agreement on that. And you just never know what's going to happen. Um, I, I like playing teams we normally don't get to see. We'd never see Nebraska Wesleyan if we don't play them uh, non-conference here and there. So that's been a really good game for us. Um, but, yeah, I think we've been on the road a lot since I've been here. So being able to start the year uh, with three home games, that's – I know my wife's happy. Um, we can tailgate at home and we can we can get family up here and uh, do all that. So we're really looking forward to it. And we just want to get going. And um, summer's going to go by quick here and we'll, we'll be ready, uh, ready when the bell rings. So. All right, coach, I can tell you 30 plus years of being married and a number of years coaching as well. If the wife is happy, that is that's a big <laughs> thing. I don't care what else is going on. That's a big thing. And me and her have taught like well, we got a three year old and a one year old at home and uh, making some of those trips to Montana, Helena and uh, some of those those Western Montana trips will be a little bit different. 13 hours in a car with a couple kids under five. So we're going to embrace these home games while we got them before we make the big move to the frontier. Absolutely. Six games at home on the 10 game schedule this year for the Comets and uh, coach Rocky Larson heading into season number five. Also the, the full-time athletic director as well. Coach, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit. As always, we will follow the Comets this season. We look forward to, uh, uh, to seeing them play and success to you all. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks again. And uh, go Comets and everyone enjoy their summer. <laughs>